Hey, what's happening guys? It's Mark back in the Shrimp Room on Mark's Aquatics. You're looking at the little grow-out tank that we put together last time on, uh, I think it was the last series. I can't remember now. I'm getting old. But there you go. We've got all the babies now. I'll have to show you them, but I'll have to get the torch out and shine underneath here. There you go. You can kind of see them all up underneath there. Look at that. Lots and lots of little baby ones. All doing well. Now, I've put some cherry shrimp in here as well because they tend to keep the tank nice and clean and, um, and look after stuff as well as the a few little ram thorns that are racing around in here. I'll just turn that light off and I'll show you around what we've got. I put another bunch of bamboo in here as well. Made another bamboo hide up with some rickia. I think these were the two original ones that I made all those videos back. If you're uh, familiar with the channel, you'll see me when I first made these. And I think I had Java fern on that one, or was it? Could have been Java moss, and I had Java fern and moss on the on the other one there. And as you can see, they yeah, they love them there. There's the mum there, look, full of berries. Cleaning them little eggs away. They like going in and out of the hides as well. But what I thought, with the last reactor that I made, and the one that I'm going to send down to Richard, I haven't done it as yet. Still getting, um, still trying to get myself back together. Driving and different things with my back is a little bit difficult at the moment. But we're getting there slowly, guys. We're getting there slowly. I'm starting to build things and make things and getting a bit happier. There's the other... Some other cherry shrimps in as well, and I put them in from the from the tank below, with the old crayfish in there. Um, and I put a few in there, and since I've put them in there, they've all gone mad and they've all buried up. There's a few more at the back there as well. You can see the saddles on some, and I think that one there at the back, she's full of uh, she's full of eggs as well, which is lovely. So we're gonna have a nice little explosion of cherries in here, and there's another one down the back of there. You can see her fanning away there with lots of berries. So it's all good news, these plaques are doing really well, they're all in the caves again, sticking their little tails out. Now he's trapped her in there again, so hopefully in another, maybe another few days we'll have some more eggs in there, which will be awesome. And the other two are in there, that's just two males in there. But yes, I've got some crystal reds in there as well. I've got one there, I think that's a couple of males that side. And this one, which I'm not sure if you can see her. She's right in the corner. It's a funny angle for me to for you to see, but she's chock a block with berries as well. So we should have some nice little crystal reds and blacks coming out of those. It's a bit of a super red pattern there with those two stripes over the top. It's quite an unusual little pattern. She, I've had her now for about I'd say probably two years. She's been in various tanks, and I've got another little crystal black in there as well. I think he's around the back there. Sorry about the glare. You just see him around the side of the filter there. The old oxidators are running down. Gonna have to fill them up shortly as well. If you're not familiar with those guys, if you're new to the channel, they actually put extra oxygen into the water. You can see lots of little bugs on the glass there. That's all the infusoria that I put in there. I put lots and lots of it in there for them, for these little baby plaques to eat over night time because they like more meatier foods and they'll come up the glass of a night and they'll scoff all those and get nice and strong. And some rapashi come as well in the post today. So I'll start feeding them on that as well because that's got a really good mixture of uh, all different stuff in there. That black soldier fly larvae and all that kind of good stuff that they like. Just drop the water level in here again. Give it a bit more splashy because they're in the caves and so that just mimics that. That rain's coming. The drop in water pressure, the drop in water level. And, um, and I've added, I'll add another a bucket of dechlorinated cold water in there and that normally stimulates them into laying the eggs so with a bit of luck we'll have some more of these little guys right we're going to go to the workshop now and we are going to start chopping out some pieces on the laser right okay what i'm going to do now is i've got this nice bit of uh, tube here it's about 60 mil and um what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out, we're going to make another reactor, it's going to be an upright one. It's going to be on a stand, so I'm going to be making a square box underneath. We're going to be fitting a little pump underneath. And um, we're going to be filling it with media, making some nice grid tops for there and for there like we did on the other one. To stop that media falling through into the pump. And a nice little cage on the top, just to stop things going in and just to let that water come out nicely. Made myself a nice little Marks Aquatic sign the other day, look at that done it on the laser, I'm going to put some lights around that, and I've done it in a nice blue, so when you put the lights around the edges, it's going to glow up quite nice, so I thought I'd put that, um, I'd put that in here, it looked quite smart, hanging up on the wall.
Right, okay guys, we've made all those nice little bits now. Now what I've done is I've jumped ahead a little bit here. Did the old classic. Forgot to uh, press play on the camera before uh, I started glowing this up. So, where we are at the moment is we've got our tube now. With the old funky Marcus Aquatics on it. It's got a little bit of bloom on there from the laser, but we can uh, that'll just polish off. And I've put my little grid inside the uh, inside the tube that's going to be one of two and the other one's going to sit nice and snug actually I think it's upside down when I get it right there you go and then that sits snug in the top there presses in quite nice and firm and that's when the media goes in I can just cap it off with that piece so um, Obviously things can't get in and the media is not going to come out because it's heavy anyway. But it's just like a little safeguard that I can twist out and um, and take out later on. So we've got two of those. Cut lovely and nice by the laser. Now with this bit what I've done is I created a box with those bits that you saw. Cut a hole through there, put my piece of pipe through. Haven't kept that... I've kept that so I can remove it, obviously for cleaning out the little filter and things as it gets clogged with stuff with certain, you know, over a certain amount of time. But what I'm thinking of doing is actually making a sponge that's going to fit in here first and slide it in like a cartridge around that. And then with these holes all the way around, it's going to be sucking in there. So it's going to have a pre-filter first before it goes up the tube and through the media. So that's going to save blocking it up that way. So the pump's on. I've acrylic glued it all together. It's been glued together for a couple of hours, so it's not completely set. It really needs to be left overnight to get that right. But that's the plan now. We've got to stick that. First of all, sorry. We've got to put one of these guys in the bottom. And that's just got to be just off the base, that one. Like there. And then that's going to sit on top of there. And we're going to have just a couple of mil okay underneath <clears throat> pardon me so that media can't drop down obviously down that little tube there and um, and foul up and get it all blocked up we don't want Nemo throwing any stones down in there do we so that's the plan so um it's really now all I've got to do is glue that in we can put this one on the top when the media is full when it's full of media, plug it in. We've got to make a sponge cartridge to go in here to make that pump. It's got a small sponge in here anyway, but I think I'll um, I'll put an extra one in there just to keep things going and keep it all nice and clean. It'll save me having to clean it out more than you know twice, two or three times a week. I've got another little project on the go as well. It's my new Mark's Aquatic sign. I'm going to turn that into a nice little neo light. I'm going to put some lights around that, and um, we're going to have it up on the wall. And um, that'll look quite funky, that I think. Done that on the laser the other morning when I was bored out here in the workshop, so uh, I thought I'd knock that up. So that's going to be my new light, a little sign for the workshop. That should look quite funky when that's done. So uh, that's it for the. I think what we'll do now is I'm going to glue. Let me take these out of here. And I think while you're here, I'm just going to get that levelled up inside. It literally just has to be pressed in equal all the way around. So it looks all nice and tidy. And then what I'll do is I'll get my syringe full of adhesive. Because this one's going to be stuck in place. I'm going to have to do that down here. These syringes, after a while, when you start using them, they get a little bit juddery inside. So you, you can either squeeze a drop out or it comes out in a torrent, which we don't want. So what you do is you just tip that in there. And you'll see it go around. And you can just keep rolling that around when you've got some on there. Like a little bead. And then roll it around. And it'll track its own way around. If you can see that now, that's gone nice and clear on that surface now. So you know that glue has put that fine little film all the way around. Right, that's all spot on in there now. 
just the job we've glued him in and that's all looking good so what I'll do now I'm gonna leave that dry now for a couple of hours and then when we come back I'll um, I'll fill it up with media we can cap it off put it in the tank and see how it goes and see how it works okay right guys there we go it's all dry everything's finished what I've done also as well I've put a nice little triangle piece on the top there as well so I can just pop that out and it's giving us a nice little handle there the water can still flow through nicely and then we can just pop that back in the top when the media's in now I've got some bio gravel bio home gravel here as I knock the tripod flying there you go got a bag of that here so we can take that off I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to go in there so we can pour this lot in Well, that's absolutely, I think, spot on. Just compact that down a bit. And now that's full up with the media. Now there's a, I would say there's a good kilo in there. Um, and if Richard was right in telling me, I think he said it was a, a kilo per 100 litres, if I remember rightly. And now we can pop that little top back on there. Now that water now is going to get sucked in through the pump. Now I haven't actually got any um, any small fine sponge left. I thought I had some left. I only had some medium sponge left, not any of the fine. And I wanted to put some black fine sponge in there. I did have a block of um, of it somewhere, but it's it's gone missing, or I've used it on other projects. So I'm not sure where that's gone. But that's something else I can do while this is running so it's not going to work it's very anyway it's some of the water in in the pleco tank it's very clean anyway there's no fish it's minimal waste so it's hardly going to get anything drawn up in through there it's got a high flow and low flow on there as well so we can regulate how much water gets pushed up through it's going to be nice and slow i know a lot of people say as well about the anaerobic bacteria needs darkness but when you think about it i know this is a clear tube but that's completely completely packed in there and in the center of that inside that gravel as well it's pitch black in there anyway there's no light going to get in amongst that gravel and that's where that that bacteria that beneficial anaerobic bacteria is going to start growing and colonizing the filter and getting rid of those nitrates you could also use that as well for um, for bio pearls for marine stuff as well i mean that'd be ideal in a sump full up with the uh, bio pearls and they would actually agitate and spin around in there and move around in the water column dispersing the water out and then it'd be returned going through the return pump back up into the system so that's another way of, um, of getting rid of phosphates and different things as well you could fill it full of phosphate media as well you could put that in it you could put charcoal in there as well but if you made anything like that guys remember with charcoal you've got to compress it into it okay you can't have it agitating around because what happens is, is it rubs together like this and it creates a dust and that will just cloud your tank you'll wake up in the morning there'll be hardly any media left in the reactor and it would have blown it all and it just literally turns it back into dust it knocks it against each other and just completely degrades itself and ends up in your tank which you don't want it'll cover everything so if you have that in there obviously you'd have to put a sponge small sponge in the bottom first quite coarse fill it up with carbon carbon sponge on the top all this and then push it down the tube and compress it down and make sure that it can't move around that way. Oh look, as well, I put my little light. Right, there you go, how's that? It's not finished. I've just got, a, I'm gonna run the LEDs all the way around it in the end. I've just got it sat on the strip there for now. It's one of these funky things you can change all colors and do different things with, but it's quite good. Um, nice and cheap off eBay. I think it was about nine or 10 quid for about five meters of the strip with a remote control and everything else. I made one of these for Richard. It from Ponga a while ago. If you look on it when he does his little podcasts and things, you can see it on his desk. Um, I made one for him quite a while ago. I sent one to Corey as well on Aquarium Co-op. Hopefully he'll show it. I'm not yet say if he doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. But I thought it looked pretty cool up on his shelf when he's doing his podcasts and things. And it'd be nice to see it up on his shelf. And it come all the way from the UK. And um, he's got some nice stuff up on there. And I thought it'd be nice. Nice little subscribe sign on it and different things. And... Um, with a bit of luck, you might show it on there, it'd be nice. 
If he doesn't, not to worry, but um, it'll be nice to see it. Anyway, what I think we should do now is go into my little shrimp room, put this into the tank, press play. Obviously, you're not going to see it. It's not going to be a, a big, like, ta-da, because it's just going to be blowing water through it. Okay, guys, we're in the shrimp room. I've put it in the tank, and like I said, it's not it's not going to be a massive, uh, a big show, but you can see i'm not sure if you can see but just at the top you might be able to just see that i know there's a lot of i'll just turn the airflow down on the on the air stone and when that clears you might see the very very slowly all the bits and those little bits of particulate in the water there very very slowly get moved around and coming out when i first turned it on just now there was a slight little bit of dust from the stone from the biohome that came off but as you can see it's very very slow and that's what I want I want a super slow flow going through there to create that bacteria and keep that going in there nice and slow in fact if I lift it out the water slightly you might see how much water is coming out there you go it's literally just beading and coming out super slow look at that And that's what I wanted to get. I wanted to get that really, really slow movement through there to get that bacteria colonising nice. And we've achieved that, which is uh, which is good. More so, probably more suited to a sump. I know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea because they're going to say, oh, "Look at that big tube in your tank." But this is a grow-up tank, so I just want the conditions and the water conditions to be right in here for my little baby zebras. And um, we'll just get this levelled up. Right, there you go. But that can be hidden behind plants in the back, behind the filters, different things. I've only put it there. I'm going to put it in the darker side, right in that corner, I think. Or in this corner, where it's darker against that side. So that's going to keep it in the dark a little bit more. But I put it in the light just so you guys can see. But I think that turned out pretty cool. And we're going to keep tabs on this now and see what sort of water quality we get over the coming weeks and see how we go. Anyway guys, hope you like a little DIY build. As always, your stars, thanks for watching. Be safe, and I'll see you on the next edition of Arx Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.